G'day everyone and welcome to my art channel Brushes with Beck. Today's video is of a realistic drawing of a bird. This is a red-backed kingfisher. I am using, to complete this drawing, I am using the Derwent drawing pencils on Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper. I am drawing on A4 sized paper. Now I haven't had the Derwent drawing pencils very long and I haven't used them extensively, only for some smaller pieces and as an addition to other pencils in some pieces, but I've never used them, I'll say properly, on a full-sized piece that I've really sort of worked through to get as realistic as possible on their own as a standalone pencil. So I really wanted to do that with these Dermot drawing pencils to get a better feel for them have a better understanding of how to use them and just to see how far I can push them and what I can achieve with them really. Now when I used, I haven't been using the Fabriano paper for very long. This is only actually the second time I've used it. The first time I used it was on the drawing I did of my cat Jasper. The, um, now when I did that drawing I initially started using Derwent drawing pencils along with my Faber-Castell Polychromos but I didn't like the way that the Derwent drawing pencils went down on this paper but it was my first time using it and I didn't really like the way that the Polychromos went over the top of the Derwent drawing pencils so I gave up on that and that's something I need to experiment with more but I really wanted to give the Derwent drawing pencils a proper go on this paper because like I said I didn't feel like they laid down very well on it the first time so I really had to go through thoroughly and make sure that it was just my inexperience, which it really was because this piece turned out really, really nicely and I found that these pencils go down beautifully on this paper. There's a few different techniques. I can get some bright colours with these pencils even though they are only muted tones and, you know, it was a really fun piece to experiment with different techniques on. Now this Kingfisher that I'm drawing one of the reasons I chose the image is A, because I really love this bird. They're such a fantastic looking bird. And secondly, there's a lot, it looks like a really challenging piece because there's a lot of different textures in the feathers. Some birds that look really sleek all over or they're really fluffy all over. But this image of this kingfisher, there's some sleek feathers. There's some really light and fluffy feathers. There's some darker fluffy feathers. And so there's actually quite a few different textures in there and so I thought that would be A, that's a really good way to challenge myself and B, it's a really good way to experiment and see what I can achieve with these pencils. So as I am working through this piece you'll see me using a few different techniques. In some areas I'm mapping out the darker areas of shadow around feathers first and in other areas I'm going in with the lighter shades of colour and building up a base, building up base layers and then working towards my darks. Now I did some experimentation with the colours of the Derwent drawing pencils before I went in to do this piece and I actually found that by laying down the white pencil first before using the dark blue that I could actually get quite bright blue by laying down the white first and doing a series of layers with the white, the blue, and then I think also the wheat as well to help bring out some of the brightness in that color. And I found that just mixing these colors in different ways made me able to achieve quite a few different results. And you'll see in a lot of areas that I actually lay down white first and I found it made it easier to blend some of my colors together uh, made some of my colors a bit more vibrant and helped me map things out a little bit too. Now I didn't always lay the white down first but I found it I found it helped with vibrant sort of color lay down and just a really interesting technique to work on with this piece because I've never really liked working over the top of white in the past. I've always found that pencils go down a bit funny over the top of white pencils but with the Derwent drawing pencils I didn't have that issue at all. So the good thing that I like about drawing birds is that 
a lot of the times they are very segmented and you can break them up into smaller sections quite easily. Overall, they look very daunting with the different textures and patterns that are all over them. But I find that once you get working on them and you break that down into sections, it's actually very easy because you can focus on one aspect at a time. And then the whole thing just comes together towards the end and it's a really rewarding thing. So it's just a matter of, like I said, in some areas laying in those base colors. And as you can see, I'm blending using a cotton bud. Now I have found with the cotton buds that if you press too hard to blend with them, that they can be a little bit scratchy. So I've been trying to avoid doing that and just using a lighter hand and trying to blend using the cotton bud a little bit and not overdo it. Because if I have pressed too much, it sort of leaves some little scratches across the color pencil. And I don't want that because potentially I could be damaging the paper at that point as well. So at this point, I'm really, really enjoying using these pencils. And I knew I would because in the test piece that I did after I bought these pencils of um, the test piece that I did was of a rabbit. I did that on Cants and Matons and I really enjoyed doing that one. I just wasn't sure about using the Dermot drawing pencils on this paper, like I said earlier. But the more I worked on it really, the more comfortable I got with it and the easier it became. And that's probably the same with any new surface that you're working on is simply a matter of getting used to using it. Now I'm not saying that every surface is going to work well with these pencils because they're probably not. And some surfaces just really aren't that good, let's be honest. But you know, with, for the different types of surfaces uh, that suit color pencil, it's just a matter of getting used to the different ones. And it has been interesting for me to get used to using the Fabriano Artistico because although it's hot pressed and it is smooth, it's still textured, which is not something that I really expected from all the things that I'd seen of it um, prior to actually buying it myself and trying it out. Now the texture is good for layering lots of colored pencil down, but I found it was um, challenging to get smooth lay down initially, but I think I've improved with that quite well. And like I said, it's just a matter of getting used to a different surface. Now, as you can see, I'm using a lot of purple in these feathers and that was part of partly shading and also partly the angle of the light, because although these feathers are probably essentially all the same color, the way they are turned and the way the light hits them, especially with blue feathers, they can change they can be quite varied in what color they look and how dark they look depending on how they're facing the light. So I found that quite interesting as I worked through this piece and I actually had to, I wasn't just, you know, throwing in random feathers here and there and drawing them all in the same blue of that area. I had to actually go through and map out the feathers and color them as accurately as possible to how they were on my reference photo. Now my reference photo of this bird was actually taken at one of my local zoos. I found they actually had one of these birds in an aviary there which was really exciting for me because I'd only seen this bird in the wild for the first time last year which was pretty exciting. Um, maybe not for some people but as somebody who likes, um, enjoys birding and bird photography, seeing a red-backed kingfisher in the wild for the first time was pretty exciting. So to then discover that there was one at the zoo possibly that entire time that I'd perhaps never noticed before was, was pretty cool. So the reference photo that I used was actually one that I took at the zoo and I thought the, it had slightly more subdued colors and I thought that might perhaps be better for using with the Derwent drawing pencils because the photos of the one I took in the wild, it was much harsher light and the blues were quite vivid and the colors were very saturated and I wasn't sure that I would quite be able to capture that. So I thought I'd start a little bit easier and work with the one that was a little bit more subdued. Now working over the head, 
I found quite interesting because all of these feathers are actually white but with like the dark streaks but I had to make them look well shadowed and whatever else I had to make them white but not white so white fur and feathers is pretty new for me on white paper so that was quite challenging through this piece because the front of the bird like the breast of the bird is actually all white as well but it's quite shadowed so it's quite purple and dark that's one of the first things I did and that was a bit daunting going in to do that without much uh, much else to refer to in terms of other white feathers on the bird and other dark areas. So finally, this has probably been bothering some people, finally mapping in the eye and drawing in the eye of this bird. I didn't do it first because it just wasn't in a good place to do it first. I tend to work from, because I'm right-handed, I tend to work from left to right across my piece so that I don't have to cross over my work too often with my hand. And even though I'm using tracing paper to rest my hand on, I don't want to be risking smudging or damaging my work. So I'm going to work in the order that's best suited for that. Now I'm just adding in that black band that runs through the eye and across to the back of the neck. Now that band is black all the way across to the back, but because the light hits it on that side, it reflects some purples and smoky blues and greys. So that was quite interesting for me to be illustrating black feathers and not using black in that area. And that's one of the things that this piece challenged me to do was also to draw with different colours than what the colour of the feathers actually was. So drawing what I was seeing and not what the colours not what the colours actually were, because it was the colours that they actually are, but not what I think I see, not what I know that area of feathers to be. It's black, but it's not black in my photo because of the light hitting it. Now moving across to the back of the bird, this is the section I was actually really dreading doing, because it's very light, very soft and fluffy, there's not a lot of definition in my reference photo and I really wasn't sure how to approach it. So I just went in, mapped out a little bit of the darkest lines, a little bit of the color tones in some areas there. And then I went actually around the area and mapped in the darks outside of those fluffy feathers before going back into uh, render those. So that was quite challenging for me and that part, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It was, like I said, it was very challenging and this piece was great for challenging me in a number of ways and I'm really glad that I chose it and that I just pushed through the whole way and a lot of it turned out much better than I even expected. So I'm really proud of what I've managed to achieve, but yeah, it was sort of just very daunting in some areas. Now you see I'm laying in more white before going in with my colours, just to try and help my colours be more vibrant and so I can smooth them out more easily. Actually, that might have been wheat, not white, going down first there. And using a number of different shades of the, the red tones, for this red-backed kingfisher. Here's the hint as to why it's called what it is. They are absolutely a beautiful bird. And these back feathers are very soft and fluffy in my reference photo. Not well defined, just very fine feathered sort of area. And I really actually enjoyed coloring that part in. It was a very, very slow process. Now, as I've been working through this piece with the Derwent drawing pencils, I've managed to get a better feel for these pencils. I've been sharpening them a lot for this piece. They sharpen really, really well. I found I don't have any breakages while sharpening. If I do sharpen to a really fine point, sometimes that point does break once I press it to the paper, if I'm trying to get a really hard, crisp kind of line, sometimes that does break, but that's 
they are a wax based pencil I do expect the end of that tip the very end of that to break on occasion and it does it's not the whole um, it's not the whole end of the barrel there that snaps off right down to the it's not the whole end of the core that snaps off right down to the barrel it's just that very fine tip of that point that breaks off and that's understandable I can still get some fine details without that really fine point on the end and layering these pencils has been really really nice like I said laying down white first on this paper I found made my colors a little bit brighter and made blending a little bit easier in some circumstances but even without laying down a base of white first blending these pencils um, either on their own or with the cotton bud is very very easy and these pencils do blend out very well with burnishing and just with light layers as well so I've been really really enjoying using these pencils they are absolutely superb the colors are extremely rich very very vibrant and I really can't think of a way in which I can fault these pencils I was thinking you know this is the first time that I've not the first time I've used them but the longest most involved piece that I've used them with and really put them to the test and I used I think it was 22 of the 24 colors there was just the two lighter shades of green are the only two pencils that I didn't use they're sitting on the left of this um, piece in the video there yeah that's the only two colors that I didn't use and it just shows you that the range of colors is just really versatile for you know I'm using chocolates in the blue areas and purples in the reds and the blue and the light areas and it's just the dark ruby earth to get some beautiful flesh pinks and you know if, it's, if you just blend them the right way and mix them in the right order and use them softly enough you can get an absolutely amazing array of colors now as you can see I've just moved on to the branch that the Kingfisher is perching on now I wanted to make this more I didn't want this to be too detailed I wanted it to be sort of a suggestion of detail and look realistic enough that it fit in with the bird but I didn't want it to be so detailed and so distinct that it sort of stole the focus away from the bird itself so I've gone in very very lightly initially too lightly really and it's taken me a long time to build up these layers but it's better for me to do that than to go in too heavy and realize it was a big mistake and I can't really undo it I haven't really tried to erase this pencil and I thought about trying to use like the I'm not sure what you call it I'll call it the scratching off technique where you use the the brand name the slice cutter or like a craft knife to scrape away some of the pencil this might have been a good piece to try that on but to be honest I really really like this piece and I didn't want to accidentally ruin it by having a poor technique with the craft knife trying to apply that on this without having practiced it first so once I've sort of done this branch and added in a few little details I thought this piece was pretty much finished and you know if you follow me on Instagram I posted this on Instagram and I thought I'd let it sit for a couple days and I had a friend of mine a photographer a friend of mine who was like you know as we artists know when it's easy to see in other people's work you know you need to boost the darks and make it really pop you know because having stronger values makes it you know easier to tell so I actually came back in a few well actually how long has it been probably a week later picked it back up again and I went through and sort of tried to push those dark areas some more because they just to make it pop and I was a bit nervous about it because I was quite pleased with how it had ended up but ultimately they were right and I really needed to work through that 
and really push some of those areas. So I tried not to rework too much of the piece, just the shadowed areas and just certain little aspects to help make it pop a little bit. And I think it did really help. So just working through the feathers there, just like I said, adding that extra bit of depth to them, trying to work out how to do that without overdoing it. <laughs> and I think I, I think I managed to do that. I probably could have gone a little bit more, but like I said, I was a bit nervous about pushing it too far because I was really pleased with how this piece ended up in the first place anyway. So once again, once I finish the bird, I'm going in over that branch because I've realized once I've done the bird, the branch is just way too light. So I'm really trying to just add a little bit of color into that branch, add a little bit of um, strength to that color tone, and then also really darken up that shadow. And as you can see, here is the end result. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit of a long one, but this is... It was really good for me to experiment with this piece and I thought you guys might like to see it in a slightly longer form. Like I said, I've used the Dermot Drawing Pencils on Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed Watercolour Paper and these pencils are just amazing. Really rich colours, easy to get detail as you can see and you don't need anything else if you want to start out with one simple set of pencils and you're doing nature art and you don't need those that vivid bright fire engine red or that bright you know dandelion yellow or something then by all means go for these pencils if you want to see more of this pencil set check out my derwood drawing pencil unboxing and color swatching video i'll link that up in the cards but otherwise thank you very much for watching please comment down below if you enjoyed this video give the video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel click that notification button if you want to be if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, which is every single week. So stick around and I'll see you next week for another video. Stay creative.